In this video, we are going to take a look at how to create, edit, and delete rooms. We will review the different types of room bounding elements, how the area and volume of a room is calculated, and what this all looks like in a schedule. To place rooms within Revit, we need a closed loop of a bounding element. In this case, walls are going to be our bounding element. From the Architecture tab, I'll select the Room tool, and then I'll place rooms within the walls. You can see that the object that's bounding the room now is these four walls. When I place the room, a tag is automatically created. After I place the room, I can change the name. and the number. Now that I've changed the number, the next room I place will be in sequence. Now if a room has already been created, I can go in and I can actually pull from a drop-down menu a room that already exists. And this happens if a room was created and then deleted. The reason I'd want to do that is because it's going to come preloaded with the name and number the way I want it to look. And also, if I look at the room schedule, you can see that exam room 2-4 already has parameters loaded in, like floor finish, base finish, ceiling finish, wall finish, and then even a room style guide that's been added to it. With the room style guide, what I can do is I can add that to the rooms that I just created, the 1201 through 1203. And I know it wants to be exam room type 2. With those being set, I can now see the finishes being applied because that's typical for the exam room type. When we look at a schedule, you'll notice that some rooms are either set to redundant or not placed. From here, we can isolate the rooms that are either redundant or not placed. From this option, we can actually delete the rows if we know that they're not going to be used again, or we can investigate the model and see why it's looking that way. So I can see the numbers are 1,008 and 1,003. So if I go back to my ground floor, I can see that I have what would be a nursing station here that is also colliding with a patient corridor. And that's because in order to put a room in this space here, what I need to do is I need to use another bounding element, which in our case is going to be the room separator line. So if I draw a room separator, to close off this space, I'll now have a bounded element so that I can place a room within this area here. And I'll find the nursing station from the drop down, and I can put it in within this area. Rooms also have two other limits and that's going to be in our z-axis. So the walls and the room separator lines are going to control the x and y. The z, or our third dimension here, is controlled by the upper limit and then limit offsets. So what we've done is we've set it to our level. The upper limit in this case is set to ground floor, which is the floor we're working on, and then an offset is given of 9 foot 8, which says this room is going to take up that much space. And now this is important when we start looking at how things like area and volume are going to be calculated. So if I were to take a look at the room and area calculations, I can actually see how the area and volume are calculated for the rooms. Now, typically, volume is not being calculated because it just takes more time. But if I were to turn both of those on, we'll start seeing that here in our properties palette. And then I can also adjust how room areas are being calculated based on either at the wall finish, center line, core area, or the core center. I'm going to leave it at wall finish because that's a typical thing to have. I'll hit OK. And now we can see 
that our volume of our nurse station is 41.43 cubic yards. And we can adjust that to be any of the units that we want. If you find yourself in a situation where there's a group of objects that you want to constantly be selecting and editing the parameters for, a good way to do that would be to set up a selection set. The example I'm going to use here is these exam rooms. Because these exam rooms will have different parameters based on the finishes that might be applied or the departments they're being assigned to, it'd be helpful for me to have them easily selectable at any moment in time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a crossing and I'm just going to go ahead and select across all of these rooms here. And you may notice that I am also picking some walls and that's fine because what we'll do is we'll use filter. I'm going to hit check none and I'm just going to make sure I have rooms selected and I'll hit OK. You can see all of these rooms here are selected. These are the exam room twos here. And what I could do is I could actually click save under selection and this will save the selection set so that I can load it in later. I'm going to call it exam two and hit OK. And go to my manage tab. I can find selection click load, pick the exam two selection set I created and hit OK. And now I have my exam rooms selected as indicated. From here, I can go through, I could change the room style or any of the other parameters, like the department, any of these things very easily. And I can easily reselect them whenever I need to.